You just recorded a new YouTube video, but your screen recordings feel boring and lifeless? Check this out. After watching this 5 minute video to the end, you will be able to make 2D screens 3 dimensional and animate them to create endless possibilities in making your videos more engaging and higher quality. Before wasting any more time, let's open up DaVinci. To get started, we need a fusion composition. Go to effects and drag one into your timeline. Then make sure the playhead is placed over it and go to the fusion tab. As basis, you can either use a screenshot or a screen recording. In this case, I will use a screenshot. First, we need to prepare this screenshot. Go to the media pool and drag it into the node graph. Then place a background node and merge it with your media. Change the color of it to the same background color from your website. Next, we use a transform node to scale the screenshot down, so it fits our frame. To remove elements we don't want or move things, we will use masks. DaVinci offers multiple masks like the oval mask or the polygon mask. But in most cases, the rectangle mask will be the best choice. I will start with masking my YouTube banner, drag in the rectangle mask and connect it to the blue square of the media node. Then change the position and the size so it fits this element. For the next elements, let's duplicate our media in with the mask. Move it over to the side and connect them with another merge node. Because we can't see the website, it's difficult to position the mask. So let's use a little trick and copy the media in one more time and connect it to the merge node. When we are finished, we can remove this node again. Now, let's adjust the mask and make a third mask for the video section. I will just keep three rows and three columns in this mask because I think this will look better. When we have finished the masking, we can disconnect this optional meter in node again and all the elements we didn't want will disappear. Because I want to change the layout, I will drag in a transform node and make this top part a little bit smaller and make it centered. Now, the screenshot is fully prepared. We could keep editing inside this fusion composition, but I like to export this as an image so we don't have all these nodes which make our node graph messy. Go back to the edit page, make sure the playhead is still over the fusion composition and look in the top left for file. Then go to export and press current frame as still. Save this in a place where you can easily find it again and import it to your media pool. Then create a new fusion composition and drag the new screenshot into the node graph again. We also need a background node with the same background color again and connect them with a merge node. Now everything is prepared and we can start applying our 3D effect. Press shift spacebar and add a DVE node. Place it between the media in and the multi merge. This will transfer our 2D plane into the 3D world. So go to the inspector and try out changing the rotation. Now our website looks already much better than what we have started with. But it's still only a static image. So let's spice things up with some animations. By holding down the shift key, drag the DVE node out of the node tree. This helps us while we are creating another mask. Click on the media in and copy paste it. Then get a rectangle mask and connect it to the duplicate. Because this node isn't connected to our node tree, we need to click this little circle to make it visible. Then choose an element of your screenshot and adjust the mask to perfectly fit it. When you finish this step, Duplicate the rectangle mask and connect it to another background node with our background color. Then connect it with a multi merge node to the media in node. The cutout element needs to be connected to the merge node at the bottom. Now click this little circle on the media out node to show our node graph again. Then duplicate the DVE node and drag one of them between the two multi-merge nodes and the other one after the cutout element. To create our depth between the website and our cutout element, in this case the thumbnail, click on the left DVE node and change the scene pivot. Then 
We will add some glow to the thumbnail. I like to keep this effect subtle. And we also need a drop shadow. Make sure the distance matches to the rest of the website. Okay, now let's animate all of this. I want my website to fly in at the beginning. So I bring in another merge node and separate our website from the background. Then I get a transform node and move the playhead to frame 20. Go to the inspector and animate the center attribute. Move to the start and drag the website out of the frame. Then go to a point in a timeline where your animation shall be completed and click on the right DVE node. In the inspector, animate the Z pivot. Then click on the drop shadow and animate the strength. And at last, click on the glow and animate the glow. Now move the playhead a few frames to the front and turn down the glow to zero. Click on the drop shadow again. Move the shadow strength down to zero. And on the DVE node, you need to change the Z pivot value to the same value as in your left DVE node. So go over to the left one, copy the value and paste it in your right DVE node. Now everything is animated, but it still looks a bit cheap. So select these four nodes and click on spline. Make sure all of them are selected. Then press S to smooth out the spline. And with T, you can show the ease in and ease out values. I like to increase both of these values. And for the final touch, you close the spline again. Then you click on the transform, go to settings and enable motion blur. You can decide whatever quality you need. Do the same for the right DBE node and enjoy your animation. These fusion techniques apply to many use cases and you can animate any website and bring in countless variations to your screen recordings. If you have any questions, feel free to comment them down below and I will see you in the next one.